Welcome everybody, Level M Diecast bringing you batch review. We are talking Matchbox 2022 mix number five. This is the E case. So if you happen to see this at the store, your pallet rater, you're looking for the E case. Uh, this is the first one. This is number 30 of 100. This is the Renault Kangoo. Uh, seen this one a couple of times. This one in Shell Deco. Looks pretty good. I like the Shell Deco. I think it's a pretty good pretty good uh, addition to the line. Uh, next one we'll take a look at. This is number 68 of 100. This is the Dodge uh, Swept Line Pickup. Uh, we have seen this truck just once before. This is the first recolor. Uh, this truck will also be in the Dodge Series uh, second mix for 2022, which hopefully will be out uh, eventually. But this one looks pretty good in white and baby blue. Those National Park guys out there, yes, the Plowmaster 6000 coming at you. Number 19 of 100. This has been modified. Uh, we will showcase uh, this modification here when we crack them open. Also, it's not the first time this truck has seen the National Parks Deco. So we'll take a look at that as well. Next one up, 91 of 100. This is the Hazard Squad in the Launch Support Deco. Sky Busters, of course. I do like the fact that Matchbox has been you know, kind of mixing up the Sky Busters a little bit, uh, integrating them with other lines and stuff like that. So it definitely uh, helps tie the brands in just a little bit. Uh, first one, which is kind of a sort of a recolor, but not really. This is number 92 of 100. This is the uh, Police Interceptor Utility. Uh, this one we have already seen in NYPD. This one is in a new deco. We'll take a look at when we crack them open, but... Uh, they are not the same number, so it is not technically considered a recolor. Uh, Matchbox does do two colors for certain models uh, each year now. And um, they are not recolors. They are part of the main line. So we actually get less models than we should. All right. Generic Matchbox Cycle Trailer. Have not seen this trailer uh, in a little bit. Um, I think it's only been in one version thus far. We'll take a look at that. Uh, it does come in two different, well, let me rephrase that. It's only come in one deco, but it comes in two versions. This does have a alternate interior. You are looking at right there is the Choppa, but it also comes with a sport bike on the back. So uh, a little bit of a different flavor in case you don't want a chopper. You can get the sport bike. Uh, both cards do depict the sport bike on the back of it though. So not too bad, not too shabby. Next one up in the mix, this is number 22 of 100. This is the Mercedes-Benz Wagon W123 in black. This guy typically gets front and rear tampos. Um, other than that, it's, it's pretty plain Jane. I think it's perfectly fine, though. Definitely happy to add another one of these. I think black is quite fitting for this particular wagon. It's a nice version, for sure. Uh, next one up, number 73 of 100. This is the MG uh, Coupe, 1971, in a kind of a dull mustard yellow. Uh, looks really good with the tri spokes on there. This guy also gets a front and rear tampos typically as well. So pretty good. If you're uh, David Tilly, you actually got the pre-pro of this model at the gathering, which is pretty cool. Uh, next one up in the mix... Variation alert for all you guys that love variations. 1984, 1984 uh, Toyota MR2, first-gen MR2. This is number 16 of 100 in red. Yes, just like all other MR2s, it does come in four different interiors. You do have headlights up, headlights down, left-hand drive, and right-hand drive. So there are four different versions to get. Um, I do have just two of them. So this is the headlights up. Uh, left or right hand drive. We'll check out who that one is. And then I do have one that is headlights down, um, which could be left or right hand drive. We'll take a look at that when we crack them open. But still working on getting the last two. Next one up. This is number 83 of 100. This is the Buick uh, Skylark convertible in black. Does have nice chrome base on it. Looks pretty good. This one. You know, a little, little 50s flair for everybody. A little classic flair. We'll take a look at that one as well. 
Uh, a little bit more modern classic flair. Uh, number 41 of 100. This is the 71 Ford Capri. Uh, this is a relatively popular model outside of the U.S., although not so popular here, obviously, because the Capri was not sold in the U.S. Uh, they did have this in the Target Retro line in a very, very, very nice green. Uh, but it just kind of sat around because people just weren't interested in it. So it's a little bit unfortunate, but we like it anyways. Uh, modern flavor here. We're talking 2020 Honda E. This is the number 99 of 100. In dark blue, this was also the 2022 Toy Fair model, uh, which may or may not ever be available to people. However, it was produced, does exist. Um, there were some shots of that I got from it at the gathering post up on my Instagram feed. So if you guys want to check that out, just search Honda E or Toy Fair 2022, and uh, you'll probably be able to pull it up. Uh, next one in the mix... This is number 80 of 100. This is the Mazda 3. Uh, this was an absolutely dismal disappointment casting last year. This casting was delayed so many times and it came out and it just wasn't good. It just wasn't good. But I can tell you, I do like this gray. This kind of gunmetal gray much better than its debut red. So when we crack this guy open, we'll see if it's truly better or not or if it's just another run of the mill. 75 of 100. This is the Tesla Roadster. Uh, this does come in that same dark gunmetal gray with the five spokes. Looks super good. Uh, Matchbox has also done this model in that um, Mattel Creations release. You know, they did it in the, you know, super fancy recyclable packaging in white. That one was pretty good. Obviously, our first color of this one was in dark maroon, which was pretty nice. Now we'll move on to brand new castings in this mix. Number 10. Of 100, this is the Ford Custom 300. Brand new casting for 2022. This one does have chrome base as well. Looks pretty good. Definitely like the uh, more obscure uh, models that Matchbox does. They don't do the run-of-the-mill everyday things. You know, like classic Mustang, whatever. Um, so it's pretty nice to get something different like this. Uh, brand new mod another brand new model is the Tesla Model Y. This is number 18. Now, if you bought the EV12 pack that Matchbox released, you already have this Model Y, but this is the first uh, actual release of it in the main line um, on single car. So if you have that pack, technically you already have it, but for everybody else, this is a brand spanking new model. It is a brand new casting for 2022. Another brand new casting for 2022 is the 2022 Renault McGain, this is number 70 of 100 in silver. Uh, fantastic model. Looks super, super good. Um, I think this is great. Getting some, you know, international flair in the uh, main line. Uh, looks like Matchbox's relationship with Renault is going to kind of take off a little bit, which is perfectly fine. Um, there's a lot of EVs coming, so I'm just going to have to deal with the EVs for now. Uh, the final brand new car in the mix and the final brand new vehicle in the uh, assorbit, you know, the final new casting, I should say. Uh, this is the 2022 Ford F-150 Lightning. This is number 84 of 100 in silver. Uh, looks decent. Um, it is, you know, going to be sized to the blister, so it might be a little bit small. But uh, let's get rid of these cards and uh, let's take a look at the models. All right, everybody, we're going to take a look at these models. We are going to crack as we go. Uh, we're going to try to do these in the same uh, direction as when we previewed them on the card. So we're going to start out with our Renault Kangoo. I know it's not a kangaroo, it's a Kangoo. Uh, I had to learn that quickly. Uh, this one in Shell Deco looks pretty good. Like I said, we've seen this just a couple of times. These are the other ones in the previous releases. Um, it's, a, it's a decent model. Uh, there's no interior or anything like that, so... Nothing really to, to go home about. I do like the deco. I think the shell deco is nice and, you know, clean. Um, it looks like something that you could definitely build up a fleet with. Unfortunately, because there's no front or rear tampos, though, um, it definitely takes away from kind of the realistic aspect of it, I guess, which is a little bit unfortunate. Uh, should you want to see some deets on the base, there is some deets on the base. All right, moving on, we're going to do the Dodge Swept Side Pickup. This is in white and baby blue. Uh, we have seen this once before in kind of a 
kind of a creamish kind of color and red, which is right here. Um, this will also be in the Dodge series this year, like I mentioned. Um, I, I hope that this comes in a five pack at some point in time. Uh, it'd be really nice to see this guy in premium at some point in time. Uh, but this one looks really, really good. You know, we're a little we're a little Mopar biased here on the channel here at Level M, so we do like Mopar related stuff. Um, I think this is a very, very good addition to the mix. Um, Matchbox has been doing a lot of uh, a lot more '50s kind of era vehicles lately, um, and I tend uh, I, I I lean a lot towards um, thanking Abe for that for bringing some uh, some different flair, some different flair. Base deets on this guy. Nothing fancy. We are up to R23 on your base coach, just in case you guys were curious. Throwing that one out there. All right, next one's going to be a little bit interesting. Okay, so we're going to move on. We're going to do the Plowmaster 6000 because it's ridiculous. Uh, so this is your Plowmaster. Now, this has been in national parks before. It has also um, been you know, retooled. This particular one's been retooled. So here's your previous version. Um, this casting has been around for a very long time. It, it was a, it was the highway maintenance truck for a long time. It's, it's a Chevy. Uh, it's based on like a C60, I believe. Um, now it's just the, it's the generic, you know, Plowmaster 6000. Here's the thing though. For some reason they decided they needed to retool this again. Now, originally when this casting was brand new, the plow was a separate piece. Um, the, the dump bed, the part that's white that you're looking at, has always been a separate piece. But the, the whole body was metal and then, of course, had a plastic base. Um, they did retool it to uh, integrate the plow into the front and make it a permanent piece of the base, which is perfectly fine. That way you don't have to add an additional piece on there. But uh, this, was also been, this one has also been retooled to take even more metal away. So the mint green that you see on this model is all that's metal. Everything else is plastic. So unfortunately, there's not very much metal left on this model. Um, I guess the more important part is still metal. But um, it's a little disappointing that this casting got modified yet again. However, this is one of the personal favorites here at Level M, this particular casting. Um, they've done about 30 or so different versions of the Plowmaster overall. And... Um, we're just happy to get it back, and of course, it's national parks. Everybody be loving the national parks, so not not a bad thing at all. I just wish it wasn't retooled. It still looks pretty good. Getting the next one ready. We'll pull this guy off. Show some base deets. There is some base deets. It does say 2021 because uh, it's considered kind of a complete revamp, so it doesn't show a previous, uh, you know copyright date on there because uh this is essentially a completely brand new version which is perfectly fine moving on to the hazard squad which is in launch control for um sky busters this casting was modified a long time ago as well um they've done a bunch of different versions of this casting uh, we'll just throw some up there um it's been quietly quite used um it's one of the best generics that they have um, it was a lot better back in the day when it used to be metal. It used to be two different parts as well. Uh, the cab used to have a nice brake on it so that you can give it different colors and stuff like that. Um, you know, when this was in Supreme Heroes, that was probably the best it's ever looked, full premium. Um, the wheels were a little bit rough. Definitely were a little bit rough on the wheels, but uh, the rest of it looks pretty good. Um, it's kind of interesting this has a blue base. Um, I think the blue base is a little bit weird. You don't really see any of the blue base except for the rear bumper. Um, so it kind of makes me kind of curious why they decided to go with a blue base. But there is your blue base. Just something interesting. 2009 and 2014. So been a long time since this casting was modified, but it has been modified. All right, next one up, Ford Police Interceptor Utility. I believe this is a licensed deco. It is Monroeville. Pretty sure this is a licensed deco. Matchbox has been very good about that lately. I've said it before and I've said it again, and I'll say it again in the future. I don't enjoy them trying to get the headlight and taillight tampos on the side pass. Uh, the front headlights are kind of okay. It kind of makes it look like it's got like a corner light in there. 
Um, and then like just the casting detail makes the headlight look like it's there, which is fine. Uh, but the taillights just don't work. Um, they just don't work. If they could maybe just get it to wrap around just a little bit more on the back somehow, um, I think that that would work out perfectly fine. But I guess I guess I have to give them, you know, a, I give them a C minus for effort. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's there. Uh, this casting looks pretty good, though. The push bumper guard is part of the base. I think it looks really, really good. The mirrors are giant. They're just huge. Um, it does have a tow hitch on it. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the fact that it does have a tow hitch because... What are you going to do? But they do make that speed trap trailer, which you could tow with the speed trap trailer should you want to tow it um, and catch some bad guys. Just getting the next one ready here. Take the base deets up on this guy. 26 Ford Interceptor Utility. There you go. Throw him to the side. All right. Matchbox Motorcycle Trailer. Uh, this was a pretty cool addition. I was pretty happy about this one when they first released it. Um, I did like the fact that it has two separate motorcycles on it. Um, at first, I thought it was going to be the same two motorcycles, but maybe, you know, not one on one side or not one on the other side, which I guess technically, technically it kind of works out the same. Um, the unfortunate thing is that the motorcycles are molded onto the same side of the trailer. So if you wanted to customize this and put them next to each other um, it would have been a lot better if they had done it on a two separate sided mold you could have just cut the mold in half and put most, both motorcycles on there which will look pretty good uh, this is your typical you know chopper style style bike um, looks it looks all right it's got that big you know sissy bar on the back it's kind of interesting uh, it does say sheriff impound this is generic deco on this particular trailer it is a generic model so i think that's perfectly fine that is the Deco right there, There's Sheriff MBX County Impound. Uh, it looks pretty good. I do believe that they have done a blazer with this same style of Deco. So this would look good with that, except for the fact that you could never tow this with the blazer because uh, it would sit like this. You know, it would be way up in the air because the blazer is huge. Uh, take a look at the base deets. There are your base deets. Should you want those base deets? This is the other version. So the sport bike version looks a little bit better. Um, it just, I don't know, it's a little bit more compact, I guess. It does have that nice uh, rear tampo deco on there too. So it's not too bad. I like this sport bike better. But it's just my own personal opinion on, on two wheels. Get the next guy ready to go here. Some of these blisters just don't cooperate like they used to. Pull him off. All right, Mercedes-Benz W123 wagon. Um, I didn't really pay attention to it in the blister, but the actual like brown interior actually looks pretty nice. Looks pretty nice. I really like the contrast uh, with the black and the uh, kind of gray base, which, you know, not chrome, but uh, that's what they do when we don't have chrome. They just do that kind of grayish kind of color in there. Uh, it does have front and rear tampos. I think this model will probably get those. Uh, for the most part, you know, moving forward, at least the front ones I think are important. But uh, it looks really good. Looks really good. It's very clean, very simple. Nothing really fancy to say about it. It's just a wagon. Uh, it does have some plate detail on it. Just has the year on there. That's pretty cool. 1980. It's pretty sweet. Take a look at the base deets. There you go. All right, next up, we're going to take a look at the MG. Now, we haven't really seen much of this one previously, unfortunately. Um, this one's been kind of limited use, but I think that it's just because, you know, it's not it's not an internationally known vehicle. I think this one looks the best so far. It's the best color. It's got the best deco on it. Uh, it just looks really, really nice. I think the color is fantastic. Front and rear deco or tempos on it looks good. The three spokes look good. I just think it's a really good casting. Obviously, not familiar with MG being from the U.S., um, but I think this is a, a worthy version, and it seems to be selling relatively well at the pegs right now. Um, but we'll see how this you know mix kind of sits around for a little bit, and you always find out who truly is the peg warmer because there's always, uh, unfortunately, plenty of peg warmers. 
Um, I don't think that uh, the new castings will be peg warmers, but you know we tend to uh, be shocked a little bit at what certain peg warmers are. But I think I think this one will be a, a relatively good sell. Taking a look at the base on this one real quick, MGGT Coupe looks pretty good, and of course just that nice rear tampo looks pretty good, nice and crisp. I like that one. I like that one a lot. All right, first generation MR2, 1984 to be exact, in red. Now, when this model was first stated that it was going to have multiple versions, uh, the first thing was, at least personally, I was like, man, I hope they never put this in a multi-pack. Um, I hope that it always stays in the basic range because then it gives you a better shot. Then they put it in the retro line. That was kind of tough. That was kind of tough. Um, luckily, there was two per case, so it made it a little bit easier to uh, get all four versions. Um, this one, again, in the single pack, however, this only comes one per case, so it does make it difficult to get all versions. does have full rear tampo on there. does have tampo on the front for the Toyota logo on the hood. Looks pretty good. I think red is a fantastic color for this guy. You know, previous white and turquoise um, are okay. Uh, turquoise wasn't that great. The white was pretty good. So hopefully we can see some uh, TRD decos on this guy at some point in time. Uh, this is uh, the other one that I currently have uh, with the headlights down interior. Uh, they're going to be all the exact same. It's just that, that insert for the window, uh, which have the light uh, integrated with it. And then, of course, they do have two separate interiors. So the headlight up one is uh, left-hand drive. And the headlights down version of this one is right-hand drive. So a little bit of a yin and yang. Kind of got both of them going on there. So it looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. It's a, it's a pretty nice casting. It seems to be super popular. There is your base deets. Looking pretty fancy. Nice rear tampos as well. Looks pretty good. Very crisp. Very crisp. All right, 1953 uh, Buick Skylark convertible in black kind of seems to be the uh running theme with this particular mix is a little bit a little bit darker colors um there's been a lot of white kind of colors and a lot of black kind of colors um it's kind of interesting kind of interesting um this one looks pretty good though uh, you know it's you gotta you gotta love 50s cars Obviously, this car in real life is enormous. Um, I think Matchbox did a pretty good job with, with the size constraint that they have. It does get the chrome base, which is really nice. Uh, it does get a little bit of tampo on the front, and then, of course, that silver stripe on the side for all the uh, chrome detail on the, that's on the you know real one. Looks pretty good. No prints in the back. Interior is relatively rudimentary. Not really sure why they have to make them so dull, uh, especially with open-top ones. Um, one of the things that they do as well with open top models is they always have that opening in the in the base. Um, they have some plate details and stuff in there. I'm not really sure why they do that. It just doesn't make any sense to me, but that seems to be on pretty much every single convertible they do now. Uh, taking a look at the base Deets, Super Chrome base. Looks decent. Of course, everything is made in Thailand. Love everything about that. Looks pretty, pretty good. All right. Ford Capri in blue. So this is very similar, uh, I believe, to the original release. And maybe it was silver. You guys are going to see it right now, uh, whether I'm right or wrong. Um, but like all other previous releases of this model, it does not have any rear tampos. It only has front tampos on it, which are really de very detailed. The problem is, and then we'll take a look at it in just one second, there is some silver print on the side for some trim. Um, I think that Matchbox feels like that's more important than having any kind of taillight details on it. Um, and, and to be honest with you, seeing pictures of the real car, I think that that is the most important thing about it, is having that silver print on the side, um, just to show that, that trim and stuff like that. Other than that, it would look kind of dull. Uh, this is that print that's on the side. It's very subtle to see what it is on there. Very, very difficult, but uh, those vents in front of the rear wheel are, I think, the most important part of it. Uh, here is the base. Again, super chrome base. Looks pretty good. 
I don't know why these uh, chrome parts are so expensive, but they are. That's that's why you don't see a whole lot of chrome from Matchbox, which is unfortunate. All right, Honda E. Literally the other end of the spectrum compared to the Capri. Like I mentioned, this is the uh, Toy Fair model. Um, if I have, if I still have a photo of that, I will drop it right here so you guys can take a look at it. If it's there, there you go. If it's not, I do apologize. Uh, this guy has been seen in white before, first edition. This one is way, way, way better. I mean, way, way, way better. The color is fantastic. It just looks so good. The kind of gunmetal print on the wheels. It's just, it looks so good. Full front and rear tampos. It's just a really good model. Now, this guy does have an interior, so don't you worry. Um, I know it's a dark window. You could probably see the interior in there. But the first edition one in white, you could barely even see anything. It was like pitch black. And everybody's like, oh, it doesn't have an interior. I can't believe that. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, but no, this one does have an interior, so which is pretty nice. Um, I was actually kind of shocked myself because I didn't think it was going to. Um, there is additional metal. You can see where it goes up to the roof. It's very interesting the way that this is uh, assembled. The reason that it is like that is because they do have to integrate the post. Then, of course, there is your base deets. Again, R23 is where we're at. All right, Mazda 3. Um, like I said, this guy debuted in a dark red chrome print on the six spokes, the small six spokes. It just wasn't it wasn't good looking. It just wasn't. I really wanted to like it a lot, and I, I think a lot of other people wanted to like it a lot, but it just it wasn't it wasn't a good model. Um, it's also in Japanese Origins, which you can get at Walmart in that six car set. It's the exact same version as the first edition. That thing doesn't move at all. Nobody buys that. But this one looks pretty good. I will admit, this one's very nice in this dark charcoal gray. Uh, it does have that gunmetal print on the wheels. Still full front and rear tampos. This one looks pretty good. This one looks pretty good. Is it? Is it Redeem the Mazda 3? No, no it doesn't. But I think this one will actually sell. I think this one will actually move off the pigs. Um, I think this one looks pretty good. This one is actually pretty nice. So I'm actually really, really surprisingly uh, surprised that it looks so good. There is the base Deets. Looking pretty good. All right, let's move on to some more electric stuff here. Tesla Roadster. This is in a dark, dark charcoal gray. It's actually uh, darker than the Mazda that we just looked at, although they're very, very, very close. It's It's darker. Um, does have the same kind of gunmetal print for the five spokes as the Mazda did, which is kind of interesting. Uh, full front and rear tampos. This is um, a pretty good version. Uh, definitely better than the first edition. I really like the white one, though. Um, the white one that came in the, that, that Mattel Creations box looks pretty good. Um, if you guys want to check that out, you can always head over to the uh, unboxing playlist and search for that Tesla Roadster unboxing. It's in there. Um I think that Matchbox has really done a good job with making electric cars appealing on the collecting side. Um, and this one looks just as good. You know, it's not it's not so dull. It's actually quite appealing. Um, and it looks way better than the Hot Wheels version. Just, just saying. Um, I think Matchbox did a much, much better job with their casting than Hot Wheels did. Um, although Hot Wheels does have a premium version of their Tesla Roadster, which... I, I don't think that Matchbox will ever do this guy in premium. There are the base deets for this guy. Nothing fancy on the base. So there you go. Uh, moving on to some more Tesla. Keeping Tesla rolling. This is the Model Y. So this is the kind of crossover-ish you know, model that they have. Um, like I said, this originally came out in the 12-pack EV online thing i'm not really sure what matchbox calls those um, i did buy it on amazon um, unboxed it as well so if you guys want to check that out it's also in the unboxing playlist uh, but there's no difference between the two uh, they are both in the dark red front and rear tampos same double d10 spoke chrome wheels on there as well looks pretty good just have that full glass roof um again a lot of, a lot of electric cars coming from Matchbox. 
I don't think that it's necessarily a bad thing. I think that that's perfectly fine. Uh, but it's, it gets it gets kind of kind of rough this year. Um, if you were at the gathering, uh, you do know that they did mention it's going to be rough. They got to get all these electric cars out of the way, and then they can move on to other stuff. So maybe after that, they'll start making some giant gas guzzling demons. Who knows? Taking a look at the base deets on this guy. There you go. All the way up to 1280 on the man number. So they're going to continue to climb. Another new casting right after that Tesla Model Y. We do have the Ford Custom 300 in tuxedo black with some printing on the side for some striping uh, and then a little bit of printing on the front. Uh, it's got chrome base. Looks pretty good. Definitely like this one a lot. Uh, Matchbox has done a really, really good job with their classic cars. Um, they look very appropriate. Um, they, they're not hot was a fight, as I like to say. They're very stock bodied. Um, and I think that the chrome disc cup wheels are perfect, although I do wish that Matchbox could come out with a new kind of steely style wheel. I think that that would be important um, just to kind of mix it up a little bit because at some point in time, you're just not going to be able to just keep throwing the same wheel on, on these models. Um, it gets it gets a little redundant, but this one looks pretty good. I think it's a perfect addition to uh, the main line. Take a look at the base here. Another super chrome base. There you go. 57 Ford Custom 300. 1297 is the man number. Just a little bit of deets on the front. Looks pretty good. It says Ford right there in the grill. It's pretty nice. Uh, brand spanking new 2022s. Okay, so this is something that we typically don't get in the Matchbox range. We don't get very, very, very new models. This is the Renault Megane. Uh, this is a brand new casting, just like the last two were. This one has a full plastic top, just like the Mini Cooper S does that they have, or the Mini Countryman, I'm sorry. Um, there's a couple other models that they do that have full plastic tops as well, like the Nissan Leaf. This one's kind of nice, though, because it does get a little bit of printing on the side to give you the line for the top of the doors and kind of the trim for the door line. Um, I think that that's important. I think it looks good. It also has front and rear tampos, some ridiculous tampos in the front with some gold looking very, very good. Um, this is a very, very nice uh, crossover. I think this is a perfect addition to the main line as well. Again, in silver, looks very, very good. Take a look at that awesome print in the front. Just looks really, really good. That stripe along the side. Very nicely put as well. Full deets on there. Renault logo is a little bit crooked, but not too bad. And of course, it does have an interior. So, no need to fret. Base deets. 1281 is the man number. So, just keep on rolling. All right, very last one we have in the mix. Uh, last new model, last model of the mix. This one is going to be the most popular one for sure. This is the 2022 Ford F-150 Lightning uh, Super Crew. Looks okay. It's, um, like I mentioned, they have to make it fit in the blister. So it's going to be a little bit rough with the proportions um, it's it's pretty small. <laughs> uh, it's it's definitely pretty small. Uh, just for some comparison, uh, there is the 84 MR2 next to it. Um, <laughs> it's really small. Uh, Scale-wise, it's very, very small. However, I do think that they uh, more than make up for the lack of, of girth of that model with the uh, details in it. We'll take a couple, couple of up-close shots of it because I think it's going to be important. Uh, silver is the debut color. Do like silver. Think silver is a fantastic color to debut it on. Um, does have the utility six spoke on there, which I think is perfectly fine. I think that's the perfect wheel for it. Does have that kind of plastic slash metal in the bed because they do have the rivet at the very end of the bed, just like all the other trucks are that they make. Take a look at this guy. You take a look at his front details. Does have that full light bar width across the front. With that, uh, you know, fake grill. After all, it does not have an engine in there, so there's no cooling needed. Uh, that looks pretty good to have that full detail on the front. Looks very good from the side print, or sorry, side profile. 
has integrated uh, step boards in there, which is pretty good, running boards. Um, and then there is your rear deets. Got F-150 molded into the tailgate. And then, of course, the light bar across the back. Looks pretty good. Prints are not that great, but you got to remember you're you're pretty up close. So they won't look that, that bad when you're just looking at the model. Uh, just looking at it from, you know, the top view. It's a good casting. Nice mirrors on it and everything like that. Take a look at the base deets. 1295 is the man number, so definitely way up there. Other than that, the base is very, very plain. Um, but then again, you know, this is an electric truck. So, yes, it's still a frame um, on the actual real model. But, you know, it's not like you have, you know, running gear and stuff under there, drivetrain and all that. Um, it just has a battery pack that runs too. Uh, battery motors to each one of the drive wheels. I do believe there is a motor in the front and the back uh, to drive all four wheels. So there you go. That is Mix E for 2022 from Matchbox. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put our brand new castings up on here to roll out with. Um, I believe the Renault is either has a fully electric version or it is a, a hybrid. But uh, the other two... Right here, those are full electric. And, of course, you still have your old-school 50s gas guzzler. So a little bit of a good mix. Uh, only four new models in the mix. But it's a good mix after all. And uh, we're going to move on. Appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. Be looking out for that mix six when it happens because that's going to be in the next super hunt is going to be in the next mix. That'll be the Porsche. So until then, that'll be batch review. Appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. Level in diecast. Peace.